plug in Arse Notoria on YouTube right now, you get nothing. Well, not entirely nothing, and it's a thing. There's a few videos about Arse Notoria. The real Arse Notoria is a method for medieval magic. It's part of the Solomonic tradition, a grimoire or magical text that could uh, allegedly help its readers learn new subjects rapidly or understand complex things at first reading. What's she doing? Learning our history. The last 5,000 years that she's missed. Been asleep for quite a while, you know. Me, if I want to do that, I watch a YouTube video. And I'm not here to talk about medieval grimoires as cool as those may be. I'm actually here to talk about a one minute, five second long trailer for an upcoming game by the same name, Ars Notoria, that just materialized in my YouTube mentions like somebody had conjured it. So what is this wizardry? Yeah, every so often I see a trailer for a game that stops me dead in my tracks. I like to think I'm a pretty discriminating gamer who knows how to sort the treasure from the trash, and that's why when I saw this two month old trailer on YouTube with a link to a developer discord with fewer than 200 people in it, I had to investigate. So it's pretty wild. For a game that looks very advanced in terms of graphics, playable features, and systems, there's been zero hype for this one. I am predicting right now that Ars Notoria is a game that you want to watch. We will watch your career with great interest. So what is Ars Notoria? Well, the developers describe it as a fantasy survival action RPG set inside an open world sandbox where you can hunt possessed creatures solo or cooperatively with friends and defeat them with a mastery of unique schools of magic to create mighty enchanted artifacts. As your legend grows, you will recruit additional adventurers to assemble a powerful, sprawling faction and bring it under your control. In the very short trailer, we see a survival, multiplayer, co-op, crafting, building, and player versus environment game with a high fantasy setting analogous to the late medieval Wars of the Roses or Tudor period. Let's slow this down and see what we've actually got. Now the trailer opens with an NPC monster chasing a mounted player right through the stone wall of a settlement. We see what appears to be a high stakes boss fight, and some clear evidence of a highly destructible environment as the player plows through statues. We also see some gun combos. The hell? An establishing shot of one of the game's settlements showcases highly accurate medieval design, with city walls and fortifications clearly inspired by Carcassonne in France. In the middle of the city, we see something that looks like the Tower of London, and a few frames later, the developers show us a library filled with books categorized by subject and humanoid NPCs using furniture. And then, there's this deceptively detailed scene with a knight riding a warhorse down a street. On screen, we've got at least three different types of frame and plaster walls in the Tudor style. This makes me really happy, because wattle and daub medieval architecture never really gets done properly in building games. We've got flower baskets underneath the windows. If they've already added cosmetic items to the game, that hints at an incredibly well-resourced dev team or pretty advanced state of development. We also see a sign indicating some kind of business or attraction, meaning that the building at right might itself have a purpose. And then we've got the knight, who looks to be wearing a full plate cuirass and armet, riding on a powerful and well-textured destrier. This really does look pretty good, and, well, that's a lot of detail we can pull out of a one-second clip. Zooming out over another knight's shoulder, we see a sprawling countryside with rolling hills, forests, and so many damn farmhouses and barns. I haven't seen a game other than maybe Kingdom Come, which strives to recreate this kind of granular, realistic scale. The fact that all these buildings appear enterable and inhabited, perhaps, by the aforementioned NPCs, well, what is this, Manor Lords? We see a protagonist character walking past a field of sunflowers toward a monstrous fairy tale castle complete with bartizan towers. They quickly showcase changing weather conditions, some of which, like snow, actually modify the character's appearance. And then they give us a taste of the building. A dev blog from September explains the building system as having six different types of construction, beginning with encampments and ending with farming. In the trailer, we see a character set up an encampment with the city from the opening scene in the background. As time passes, the character upgrades his encampment to a farmstead, and then showcases what it would look like if they built a smithy instead. And then we get a good look at the content, the actual monster-blasting, magic-casting PvE combat that will form the foundation of the Ars Notoria experience. The dev blogs say a resource called Ars will be used to cast powerful magic as the players fight a variety of possessed, undead, and, yes, humanoid opponents. At one point, we see a player fighting some possessed elk in fully volumetric snow. This is some technically audacious work. According to the developers, some of the human opponents will apparently be part of sprawling non-player factions who compete with the player group. So maybe you remember a few years back when Valheim dropped, and after collectively picking our jaws up off the floor, we all logged millions of hours as imaginary Vikings in a deep, well-crafted world full of dungeons to explore and things to do and build. 
Well, that's immediately the same vibe I got from Ars Notoria when I saw its trailer. Except Renaissance, with a focus on magic. And handguns? Maybe we'll get Hussite war wagons for the faction wars. I'm a big survival and RPG gamer. I play lots and lots of Valheim, going medieval, have an incomprehensible number of hours in Conan Exiles, and yeah, back in the day I even played Life is Feudal. In games like Valheim or Conan, I tend to build big, monumental designs, massive castles, sprawling settlements, and until now there hasn't been a game that allows me to build big in a world inhabited by NPCs who answer to myself and to my friends. A world where we can go on adventures together and engage in epic battles. And you know what? This might just be the thing. Here's hoping, with all that monumental architecture and design, that they get the siege warfare and faction level conflict just right as well. Without having had the benefit of playing the game, I'll say that the trailer immediately makes me think of some blend of Valheim, Conan Exiles, and action RPG co-op game classics like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance or Gauntlet Legends. The idea of building a camp, a town, or a castle with my friends, and then using that as a base to raid and trade and delve into dungeons to find magical artifacts and fight bosses, well, that's pretty damn cool. And last, since we're talking about the developers, for a game that only started posting updates two months ago, they've been pretty active. If you gallop on over to their Steam page, where you should totally also wishlist the game to help them out, you'll find that Xron, the developers, have been busy posting updates, including building system previews and detailed explanations of the game's combat classes, which, for right now, appear to be entirely dependent on weapon type. That's an interesting choice. I'm just mostly impressed by how far along the game appears to be in its development. And Ars Notoria is one game I hope to be playing sooner rather than later.